so much for a fancy introduction. Uh, this is the pro spec list on Tales from the Flip Side. I am your ad hoc host, Nico, uh, and this is my band of hooligans. Gentlemen, would you kindly introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, what's going on? Rich Taylor, aka Dollar Bin. Uh, just launched a subreddit, uh, New Comic Book Day, Final Order Cutoff uh, group. Um, get at me on IG and check it out. I'm Ultra Maximus from Ultra Space Maximus on YouTube. You won Ultra Maximus on IG. Thanks for the follows. I'm Mr. Long Short. Uh, ben, I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, looking to get into this. Uh, I'll go next, I guess. Uh, Dino, aka uh, CEO. Uh, that's about it. I don't know. We'll, we'll go this way. What's up, Andy? Indie Spotlight series over at Comic Book Invest uh, and Indie Spotlight on Instagram. Steve, my bargain comics on eBay help capitalize my company so I can get a cool helmet like. My buddy uh, Jessup does. <laughs> What's up, kid? He's all flexing the helmets. I'm Jessup. What's happening? Uh, half price cook. Um, happy to be here. Uh, slacked so much this week. I'm so sorry. I had to get this helmet. It was pretty much <laughs> the highlight of my week. <laughs> and uh, just happy to be here. What's up, Phil? What's up, uh, Phil? Vintage Comics and Toys dot com. Um, we do the back nine here uh, on a uh, CBS side every week. Cool. Happy to be. And, here. and you got the banging background in the back, dude. Fucking fire. So. Phil definitely has a better background than anyone on the channel. I want to be real clear about that. Um, yeah, Indeed. not even close. Well done, sir. Uh, so if you're new and you haven't seen this show before, I want to kind of give you a, a quick and dirty on how we select these books. Um, basically, what we've done is put together uh, an all-star cast, not merely uh, those who you see uh, here on the screen. Uh, there's a, about a dirty dozen of us who uh, nominate books and, and thereafter uh, vote, vote on those books. They are books that we believe have significant potential upside. Uh, for some people, that means uh, you know a, a book that's in back issue bins, a, a dollar book that you know may have a five to ten x multiplier uh, in the future. For other people, uh, the books that they're looking to uh, encourage others to invest in. Uh, you know, are already twenty, fifty, a hundred dollar books that they think you know may double or triple in price. Uh, we're trying to give you our uh, philosophies in a um, way that uh, doesn't focus on one specific style of collecting or buying or selling or flipping, uh, but gives equal consideration to all the different styles of the people who've done it really well uh, that were selected to be part of this project. Uh, without further ado, Dino, can we get into the books? Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, as usual, we do 10 books, so uh, number 10. So number 10 tonight is, oh, let me uh, share my screen so I don't look like an idiot. Uh, there we go. Come on. There we go. All right, Ultra, uh, my recollection is this was your selection. Yeah, this is one of mine. Uh, this is a book that I've tracked for a little while here, uh, running down all the legacy second prints. And uh, knowing that uh, what I do about the tremendous amount of store variants and other variants that were available, and yet the lenticular kind of took away from the artwork that we have here, and with it being a Captain Marvel swipe, um, I, I thought this would be a good one because I do think we may actually see this storyline come to fruition. Yeah. It just, death of Mighty Thor 700 for people who are listening only. I mean, those lenticulars were a crime, right? I mean, you could not make out any of this art in those books, right? So trash them. And, uh, and, you know, fortunately for collectors, those reprints were 
Uh, we're relatively low print run, so yeah, this is a stunning one. Great pick. Cool. All right. Uh, long story short, super tough in high grade. Love the book. Number nine. Yeah, so this one's mine. Um, I really am a fan of this Spidey Electric com uh, Company series. And um, we've already seen at least one of the issues from the run pop. Uh, that's the first appearance of an African-American spider woman. Um, it's been selling for you know almost a couple hundred dollars lately. Uh, by my uh, estimation, uh, this is the book from that run. Uh, always has been, and uh, I, I think it's the undisputed champ uh, at this point in the game. Uh, Doom as Darth Vader, uh, you know Peter Parker as uh, Luke Skywalker, and uh, Moon Dragon uh, as Princess Leia. I don't think it gets much better. Um, now these books have already started to get a little bit of traction on eBay. Um, but haven't uh, really um, seen the attention that the African-American Spider-Woman book has seen. Uh, they're very difficult to find in any grade, let alone in high grade. So uh, if you can find them in the wild, good luck. Otherwise, uh, I think you may be competing for them on eBay. Um, how the hell did this make it on the, the list, guys? I thought uh, this was just one of my crazy books. <laughs> because I think I voted it like four. Oh, it's, 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 it's Star Wars. And it's the Spidey Super Stories you never find. And if, and if any you can believe it, there's a three nine eights on the census. Yeah, Jesus. on top of that, I love the Doom cover. Anything Doctor Doom, but that cover's pretty dope. Spider Man's got a lightsaber. Enough said. Right. <laughs> yeah. that, 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 that right there so is what takes right the there. Right. Perfect. Nice one. Perfect. So that's number nine. Uh, let's go to uh let's go to number eight so this is number eight number eight's going to be this is uh infinity gauntlet number one the variant edition off the uh off of marvel is it is it secret wars i guess yep yep yeah uh all right so uh, another one of my picks uh i won't uh blabber on uh, anymore somebody want to tell other people why they voted for it well this is a one in 50, if I'm not mistaken, right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, is, it, is it a 1 in 25 or 50? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, there, there were no incentives that were higher than 1 in 25 for this one. one. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. There's two 1 in 25s, right? Um, mm. No, this is the one for number one. Then there's a number two 1 in 25 that also... Has uh, the same character. Ha yes, and it, and, and it also was very, very popular uh, at the time of release. But this one's the Granov. And uh, look at the Thanos behind her. Like, if this, the, the, this is an insane looking book. But not only that, they're they're looking for opportunities and ways to introduce Nova to a, a mainstream audience, and possibly even circumvent the Ryder family from their involvement with with the origin. Which would be this outlet, I guess, would be the way that they would be going. Are there a lot of female members of the Nova Corps? Yeah, uh, no, if, you, okay. if, you're, if you look at the reestablished Nova Corps that happens in Guardians of the Galaxy, they they have multiple female members. But this this is a family that actually is a Nova Corps family. Hmm. So it, it, the the I recommend the story. It's a short read. So I think I believe a five issue mini series that took place during the Secret Wars crossover in 2015. Uh, and I do not believe we have seen her. Uh, we may actually, no, I think she has actually joined the mainstream Marvel universe via guardians of the galaxy, uh, somewhere around the 150th issue. Yeah. The books are cheap. They're about, uh, I guess ratio. I thought they were half ratio. Uh, I'm like, uh, I was like, Ben, I was convinced it was one in 50 and I may have misled you by, uh, writing that on the list. Forgive me if I did. Um, I think it's got a lot of potential upside. We'll see how it goes. Perfect. Uh, so we got number eight. So let's see what we got here. Seven. Seven is Sonic the Hedgehog number zero. Steve. Yeah, so this was one of my picks. Um, so this is the first 
ongoing of Sonic. There are some other first Sonics. Um, one is an uh, insert that was in DC Comics. It was, it was also distributed separately. And then there's some kind of mini comic, but this is the first full size, legit standalone Sonic uh, comic. Um, Sonic almost beat Spawn to 300 issues. So uh, a couple years ago, Sp uh, Sonic switched licenses from Archie, where it had been for uh, almost two decades to IDW. And even that alone says something about the Sonic IP is that, you know, it, it just didn't end at Archie. It's, it's continuing on. It's, it's uh, now a successful ongoing series. Um, but, you know, when I was thinking about, okay, what did 90s kids like? You know, we've talked a lot about the 80s properties, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Masters of the Universe, um, you know, obviously Star Wars. Um, but, uh, you know, what is it in the 90s and what do 2000s kids think about? And Sonic, you know, might be a possibility, uh, you know, because the, although, you know, I think the video game output has dropped off as a comic character, Sonic, you know, has this, this expansive universe. Matter of fact, um, I'll show, um, this is the Sonic comics encyclopedia and it's like, um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's like the official guide uh, or the official handbook to the Marvel Universe. You've got pages in here with characters and profiles and wh where their first appearances were. So they they have a whole Sonic uh, comic universe. Um, there's newsstands, there's Canadian price variants, uh, there's regular variants as you get into the 200s, uh, and the, they can get quite pricey. And I think this still has a lot of uh, room to grow. Uh, there was a successful movie, which can't be said from Mario Brothers and some of the other maybe well more well known uh, video game properties. And you know, so um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of room to to grow on this. And uh, you know, I don't think it's probably a easy you know nine eight, you know, being a kid's book and with a primarily white cover. So. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm 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 a Sonic comic fan. There's 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 a lot of money to be made there. That's fascinating. Oh. Yeah, I mean I, I uh, it's hard when you look at a lot of these properties like the video game properties because the books are already so expensive. Um, I, I think this was a real insightful play. Uh, I'm a believer. I'll I'll tell you what, my son, he's older now, but he he when he was. 10, 11, 12, picked up Sonic every week, has a has a long box of them, loved, loved, loved reading it. And I'm not even sure how he got onto it, but um, um, it does have a devoted following. And even those recent runs of that book are actually relatively tough books. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I've been collecting uh, Sonic uh, recently, at least for the last two, three years. I get all the one in tens, but I was fairly aggressive on this pick good one by the way Steve um, you know because it's just everything that's going on right now cabin fever just brought me back to uh, sophomore year playing Sega Genesis you know and right when I saw it I was like oh man I got that rush so I thought it was great too. Cool. cool cool so that's number seven uh, number six is uh, Avengers 24 uh, now, right? Dot now. Yeah. I voted this book number one, Ultra. I saw. I uh, thank you. So this one was an obvious pick of mine. Uh, I've talked about this book a couple other times before, and I, I know kind of broke my rule of trying to have this list stocked with books that I've never mentioned before. But it was kind of hard, especially with everything about to happen next Friday. Uh, it, it was just one of those books that I had to mention. So this was a variant for, they did multiple variant covers for the same book where it was, all the artwork wasn't released and final order cutoffs were coming in and they were, you know, they basically just had, uh, you know, no, no cover art to be determined. So you didn't really know what you were going to get. And then it, it turns out that some of them were really, really good swipes like this one, I think, is an absolute home run out of the set. 
Um, but of course, you know, Wanda and Vision variant covers of them together are very few and far between, actually. It's not as many as, uh, as you, you would actually think there would be with it, as long of a history as the characters have. So with me being an, uh, you know, an utter X-Men nut, when I saw this swipe of Uncanny X-Men 137, uh, where, the, you know, they're almost the death of the, death of the Phoenix. So it, it really was, uh, I, I thought it was very tastefully done. Yeah, so help me, it's, it's a one in 10? Um, you know, it's no, like, it's an open order. It's open order, order variant. It, it is an open order variant, but uh, and it's a C cover or a B cover. Uh, well, that's just it because I believe there were there was like four, there was like eight variants for that cover. Like, that, yeah, that eight month. or ten. So yeah. you know, and it was all for the same book. It was just different Avengers covering X Men books, and it, it was. It was one of those months where you know they do a theme, and apparently they decided to do this variant theme. Yeah, and the the reason that I, I kind of juiced up the what the reason I desperately wanted it on the list is because uh, I think it may be the perfect storm. Um, we'll see, uh, but if uh, this becomes the plot of Doctor Strange two into the Multiverse of Madness, where Wanda is. Uh, you know, the catalyst for all of the, uh, you know, like conflict and, and strife. Uh, and it rolls out of, you know, the nine uh, weeks of joy that we all get with a, a new Marvel property on Disney Plus. Um, be, and it introduces the X-Men, uh, you know, with her, uh, you know, in a way that I, I've talked about before and I, I hope uh, uh, I hope happens. Um, I think this one may be a home run. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's uh, it's a beautiful cover, and, and I'm really happy that you brought it to people's attention. Thank you. There, there were over 20 variants uh, to this one, and all X-Men theme, but I'm, I'm really glad this one made the top 10 because uh, I have a copy. <laughs> <laughs> so, only one, unfortunately. It's uh, Daniel Acuna, right? Yes. Yep. All right, so there's over 20. Holy crap. And does anybody know what the Comic Cron numbers are in it? It's like 144,000 total. And I want, and how deep into the, the lettering, I wonder. Is it? I wonder what the district. It's hard they, to, you know, they it's just hard just, to, that's how I figured it out. It, it goes to V. Goes well, to but v. I mean, like, what letter is this one? This one is P. Yeah, so it goes to V. It goes to that 23 letters. It's, yeah. 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 But then it's it like a Midtown one and a Hastings, so. Yeah, so there were there were there were actually yeah, there were store variants also available that month which which also kind of would inflate the the print run because the, the Midtown is a Jeff Scott Campbell. So they always yeah, I think you can still, you know, go and get that one on the shelf. But I mean that would that would explain the ginormous print run, but if you're going to look for the diamond in, in the rough, it, so to say, uh, this is the one that stood out to me when I was doing the research for a, you know, looking at Wanda and, and Vision variants and different covers that they actually shared together. I mean, think about it. It's a sick cover. And if it came out today and it was like a one in 50, everybody would be, at least I would be trying to get it. So yeah, especially, it, it, especially it, it, before Wanda Vision too, you know. Um, but we'll, we'll definitely see what happens. I'm excited. And we also, we're, we're gifted with two episodes on release day. Oh, so it's eight weeks. Good. Yep. Nice. Okay. nice. Cool. Perfect. Uh, so we'll get that on to number five. So number five. Why do you keep showing my ex-girlfriend? No, you know, because <laughs> She doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't get charged royalty. Uh, God country. Uh, second print number one. Number one second print. So. Yeah, I'm a I'm a believe a big believer in this book. Um, this is one of mine, and it's a different cover art uh, than the than the A and B first prints. Uh, movie on the horizon, and I mean it's it's low print and it's it's cheap right now. You know you can get this book raw for fifteen bucks. You can get a 9.8 right now for like 70 bucks. So 
I mean, and that's a tough and, red cover. And, yeah. You know, let me add to that, Andy. Is I thought this pick was so good. I've been I've been telling people, you know, that are close to me uh, about this book. I, I forgot about the red cover, but I think this is a slam dunk. I think you did a great job. And one of the reasons why is, you know, Case is releasing some books. Uh, I believe his his lady's doing one and uh, with him, and then Shaw's doing another one. And according to multiple interviews that I've read, um, the are going to be tied into God Country or at least be in the continuity in the or the universe and uh, take place in the God Country universe. And the books that are coming out, I believe, is uh, The One You Feed, uh, another one called Werewolf, and then uh, there's a new third one that is a possible god country uh universe situation um called uh flood so i think this was a great pick and there's less than five thousand of these out there and one thing that that rich and i figured out together too is that if you read crossover number one and if you're reading crossover there's a dome that goes up and they give a date of when it goes up and that date matches the release date of god country number one so there might still be crossover possibility um you know they didn't pick that date out of the air yeah yep. that's Good cool. call. i didn't even know that so i mean yeah well, this is well, it's, it's, don't forget about the movie yeah and that's what i'm saying i mean there's a movie coming and you know you're going to see this thing spike when a trailer eventually does hit so i mean I, I, and it's a great story. I mean, if you've read it and, and you've had somebody touched by Alzheimer's or, or, or whatnot, I mean, it's 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 unreal. So, and, and how many printings did number one go? Four. 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 There's four, and then there was the anniversary. Uh, no, it was four printings, and then there was the anniversary uh, by Addie Granoff. And there was a right. virgin and a uh, and a trade for that. Yeah, and then there were the the uh, blind box ratios. Yep. Yep. Cool. Uh, so Good stuff, man. Five. Let's go to uh, number four. Secret Warriors one. Very. All right. All right. This is the first one. I forget who whose pick it was. This is all ultra. ultra. So I, I can't believe the the three that I picked actually made the list. But so we we want to talk more about Moon Girl. Devil Dinosaur, uh, Daisy Johnson, Quake, as well as Ms. Marvel. And the Robbie Rodriguez variant for Secret Warriors number one, volume two, the one in 50 is already out there. I mean, there, there's, you know, 9.0s that I, I personally have sold uh, with color rub and stuff on them and still got over ratio for them. So... There are just not too many of those out there, and this one was a percentile qualifier. Like majority, almost every hip hop variant was, except for a couple of the. There was two second prints that were open order that surprised the crap out of me. Uh, Mr. Longshore pointed that out too. Um, so th these qualifiers that again that people had to hit for a store makes these books regionally rare. So you have some small stores that could have ordered a crap ton of these metrically by the by the caseload. And then you had larger stores like Midtown who wouldn't be able to qualify for it without ordering an entire publishing company. So it's, you know, the the black cover too with these hip hop variants, uh, making 9-4 and up, just color rub, spine break, absolute just magnets. So good luck long term on these, and of course the Secret Warriors. What uh, the chatter that we're hearing about Daisy Johnson continuing to, uh, continuing on as Quake, um, with Moon Girl being developed by Lawrence Fishburne. I think they're going to start off with an animated version. Eventually, they're going to hit us up with a live action version. Uh, they got Kamala Khan showing up as far as you know in, in her development photos and stuff like that. And I really think the Secret Warriors is where they're headed. So. This is a ground floor book. If you can still find it in the back issue bins, it's an unknown Moon Girl and Ms. Marvel book by a lot of people, and you might be able to still snag them while they're while they're around. 
Do you know what? I can't remember what the qualifier was, but I, I've hunted, you know, hip hops for a long time. This one has always been hard as hell to track down. This I don't think there's any eBay at the moment. To be honest this is, with you, this is at the end of the of the run, man. And I tell you, at the end of the run, it took me months to to put together the last like twenty that were released because they were they were really really scarce uh the qualifiers for them were still high and people were still complaining to marvel about the qualifiers being so high but yeah. they still they still kept them up there to try to boost orders so and what happens is with these novelty covers like towards the end of the runs people kind of get fatigued on them and retailers just stop even if they Amen. do qualify and they're not moving they just stop they don't even bother order even if they got there and i think that was the case for this one because this one is is a real, real difficult one to chase, um, but it's awesome. Good pick. Thank you. Does this one have the bad color rub on the back like the Moon Girl? All of these do, man. This is in that same time frame of uh, of Marvel with cheap paper and the wet ink. Just and throw the books in the cases. The ink is still yeah. wet. You know what I mean? So it's just the, the, the black covers, when I say these hip-hop variants are going to be the toughest, nine fours and above for years to come, the longer they sit in boxes and get tossed around, the worse it is for them. Uh, but good luck to those who have assembled a good set. And uh, if you're if you're shooting for all 146 and 9.8, may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> That's funny. Good stuff. What's next? Uh, we're at number three, so number three would be um, Star Wars: The Dark Vader. So. Who picked it? And it's still gonna. Yeah, this is uh, that's Richie. This is, uh, this is Star Wars: Darth Vader one. This is the actual second print. Um, uh, Rafi Ayanko uh, interior art, you know, made cover, typical Marvel, but I think they really did well on this one. Um, it's a beautiful cover. This is uh, this in story in guts. You have the first uh, appearance of Darth Vader's uh, 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 droid here. It, it's like a it's like a help aid, and um, his name is Zed Six Seven. Um, the reason why I like the second print not only for the cover is because this is its first cover appearance as well. And um, last time I checked, uh, the, I think retailers ordered this at the tune of around forty eight hundred. In circulation um you know it's it's a beautiful book and you know it's uh i mean you can find it in dollar bins but there's start the word is out and you know they're starting to dry up and i've been noticing on the secondary market that there are active bids on this book as of a few days ago so yeah i mean this is this and you know i i i'm not going to take it any further i mean i know vader's coming back for the kenobi series or rumored or what have you um, I'm not saying they're going to give him a droid or what have you, but in this story, he, he, the, uh, Zed six, seven discovers that Luke is Vader's son and gives him the information and he becomes very important, uh, with the later issues. So I don't know if they're going to do that or not, but Hey, if, if it happens, you know, might want to have this book. That's super sweet. Cool. 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 Good pick. I love that cover too. It's awesome. Number two yeah. is Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe 1. Uh, is this a second printing, boys? Yeah, it's a second printing. Um, so this this was my pick. Uh, you know, this book's got a couple of things going for it. One, um, you know, this Campbell cover was uh, from Siege number three. Um, you can't get it. I mean, the book is literally unattainable. So this second print is is pretty attractive, right? This thing wasn't necessarily overprinted in the neighborhood of about ten thousand. You know, there has been some talk that the Deadpool three storyline will be him sort of cleaning out the Fox uh, Marvel uh, X Men universe. If so, you know, this book maybe becomes um, a bit more attractive. But you know, the cover itself is is super super cool. In an area where, in a, in, a, in an era where second prints are in, in high demand, I just find it funny that this book isn't talked about a little bit more. Yeah, I love this book. Um, you were kind enough to look up the Comic Cron numbers; they uh, come in around ten thousand, right? Yeah, yeah, that was for for the first print, and, and the, the second number two isn't on the list. 
but it's a book that worth looking for as well. It's the um, it's the it's it's a Wolverine dressed up as Deadpool, um, and uh, you know that that first print <laughs> cover is also impossible to get. Um, so you sort of have two um, somewhat legendary covers um, by Campbell for uh, number one and number two. Um, that really, I just think, you know, are are completely being overlooked at the moment. These books aren't super cheap. They're somewhere between, probably find them 20 to 30, maybe 40 range for these books. But but given how many there are and um, and how important these covers are, uh, they seem like pretty good pickups. And, yeah. and when Deadpool is hot, we know how hot his books get. And, you know, Ryan Reynolds is not just showing up for one movie, right? I mean, Deadpool is going to be incorporated into a bunch of stuff. It's just too big of a property. So, um, you know, people are sleeping on Deadpool right now. When he comes back, he's going to come back with a with a fury, I think. So, um, smart grab. I think. He's yeah. 25. He'll be back for What's the next up? 15 years. Ryan Reynolds looks like he's 25. <laughs> I'm sure he's older than that. He'll be back for like 15 years. Yeah. He's almost, he's almost 15. He's in, he's in for the long haul. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's uh I mean I, I've heard the rumors from big channels that that's the kind of film, even though they may not explicitly describe it as such, um, that Disney's been talking about doing Deadpool kills the Marvel universe, but it'll be the Fox Marvel universe. Um I, I think if that happens, there's the ceiling's going to be real high on this book. I, Major that's, upside. That's only the first opening joke on how he wound up in the Marvel universe. He's like, "Oh, well, first I had to kill everybody. That would still <laughs> work, all right, for a lot of for a lot of Deadpool fans, because of course they would show it like they did at the end of Deadpool two when he finally got the time travel tech. I mean, that was that was some of the best universe cleanup I think I've ever seen him be able to do." And to, to set him loose and let him go through the time stream, do it. I dare you. Yeah, I think it would be a huge hit. I think it would be an absolutely huge hit. Yeah. Um, you guys are going to have me buying books. I, that's that's what happened here. So. And without further ado, our number one book of the week, it is Spider-Man 2099. And actually, it's the new stand edition. Yeah, so um, you know, this is another one of my books. Anybody who's collected this book um, knows how hard it is um, in high grade. This red cover, it gets dinged up and it's dead, right? There's no pressing it, there's no saving it. The newsstands, um, you know, I've hunted a bunch of these. You know, when I say high grade in this book, you know, high grade to me means 9 0 or better. I mean, it is really freaking hard to pull, um, you know, anything 9, 6, 9, 8 on this. What I'll point out is, is that, you know, Miguel O'Hara um, is coming. It'll be a big part in the next um, Into the Spider-Verse movie. Um, you know, people are running to Amazing Spider-Man 365 as, as his first appearance. And sort of literally, yes, it is. But what that appearance is, right, because I found a lot of people haven't read that book. It is at the very end of it. It's the first five pages of this book. So similarly to Strange Academy we saw in Thor or Daredevil or You Pick the Book. Um, it was a five-page tease at the end of 365 that, that was this really? book. Um, you know, him being on the cover here, this actually being such an iconic 90s book, overprinted in the direct edition, the newsstand had definitely had some um, collectability. And I know a lot of people go out and they buy um, that second print that came with the action figure. It's a great book in its own right. Uh, but this one... You know, I just picked one up the other day. We'll see what the condition is. I bought it online. It's hard to tell for 10 bucks. Uh, I still buy these. They're out there if you want to pick them up. And um, they're, they're still floating around out there. If you see it, super smart grab. I think this book is going to get really, really hot over the next couple of years as Miguel O'Hara becomes a bigger and bigger, uh, you know, part of um, the animated show. And then who knows? I mean, given what's going on with Spider-Man 3, I wouldn't be surprised we get a glimpse of him in that movie either. You know whether if he's just hopping through the multiverse or what, but you know it wouldn't shock me if we if, if we if we got a glimpse of a character.